Hi guys, you welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. As most of us will be aware, what's happening in Palestine? What is the position of us Muslims in this situation? Number one, we have to realize as Muslims that today there are 5.211 million Palestinians of which more than 2 million are in the Gaza Strip. And the total Muslim population of the world today is more than 2 billion. According to me, these Palestinians, for the last several decades, they are doing farz qafaya They are protecting the third holiest site of Islam. They are protecting the Masjid Al-Aqsa. What they are doing is farz qafaya It's the duty of every Muslim. If they were not there, it would have been our duty protected. So what they are doing is they are risking their life. The Palestinians, they are doing farzik fire on behalf of the Muslim Ummah. Today the Muslim Ummah are more than 25% of the world population. There are more than 7.8 billion human beings in the world today, of which more than 2 billion are Muslims. More than 25% are Muslims. And it is a shame that all the Muslims more than 25% of the world population put together, we cannot protect Masjid Aqsa. So number one, these Palestinians are doing farz e by protecting the third holiest mosque, the third holiest site of Islam. What should we Muslims do? Time will not permit me to speak for long. I will just mention a few important points in brief. I will mention 13 points in brief what the Muslims should do. Of which the first seven any Muslim can do and should do and the remaining all will not be possible but those who Allah has given the position they can do. Number one the least that any Muslim can do and should do is do du'as for the Palestinians and for Masjid Aqsa. I feel it is a fard for every Muslim that they should pray for our Palestinian brothers and sisters. We should pray for their safety. We should pray for the victory. We should pray that may Allah give them sabr. We should pray that those Palestinians who have been martyred, Allah should give them the highest level in Jannat al -Fridos. And my suggestion would be, the best time to pray for our Palestinian brothers would be in Tahajjud. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the last one third of night. And if you do dua in sujood, in the Tahajjud Salah, that would be the best. Those of us Muslims who regularly get up for Tahajjud, they should pray. And those who are not used to getting up, at least this can be an excuse or an initiative for you to see to it that you get up in the last one third of night and pray tahajjud salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that salah, in sujood, you make duas for our Palestinian brothers and sisters, for their safety, for their security, for their sabr, for their victory, to grant jannah to those who have been martyred. You may never know that because of this, tomorrow it may become your habit that you get up for Tajjud Salah every night. And this is the best time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the prayers of the believers. And he says, who is there would like to ask and I will answer your prayer. The least a Muslim can do is do dua for our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. Number two, you should make the situation aware on the social media. The atrocities that are done by the Israelis on the Palestinians, the violation of human rights, the violation of the international law that is being done. Time will not permit me to speak about in detail, which you can refer to my talk on virtue of the Masjid Aqsa, where I've given in brief about the history that how the Palestinians initially there, 
how did the Jews come, and till the situation that is today. Time will not permit me, but we should make on our social media, whether it be on the Facebook, whether it be on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on WhatsApp, we should make the world aware of the atrocities done by the Israelis on the innocent Palestinians. Number three. Prayer is the master key. Prayers can solve so many things. I love the number one point Zach Knight raised. He said, we need to pray for the Muslims facing these challenges, these difficult times. When you pray to God, when you pray to Allah, Allah hears the cry of his people. And secondly, you spoke about, you know, spreading the news on social media, the atrocity, you know, spread the news, let, let people know what's going on. Not only the negative part, even the positive part should be spread. Even even though there are some, you know, bad things happening to them, they, they are into dangers, you know. We know the news we've been hearing day in, day out. That doesn't stop us from also spreading some of the few good news about the Palestinians. So, let's keep watching, guys. We should spread the literature, whether it be pamphlets, whether it be books, whether it be e-books, on this issue so that the world is aware of what is happening in Palestine. Number four, we should make publicity, whether on billboards, whether on buildings, hoardings, whether it be on buses, on different venues, so that you make the people aware in your locality, in your city, in your country about the atrocities done on our Palestinian brothers and sisters by the Israeli forces. Number five, there should be peaceful protests all over the world by the Muslims. But see to it that these protests are peaceful. And see to it that if you are living in a non-Muslim country, see to it that you follow the law of the country, take permission, do protests, See to it, you give a memorandum to the Israeli High Commission or to the embassy if it's there in the country, if you're living in a non-Muslim country. The sixth is that we Muslims as a whole throughout the world should boycott all Israeli products. We should boycott consuming all Israeli products. Surely the 25% of the world population, if we boycott 100% of the Israeli products, it will be surely a reminder to Israelis and it will be a good lesson to them. Number seven, we should contribute financially whatever we can. And as I've always said in many of my talks before, that when you contribute, see to it that you contribute besides your fard zakat that you have to give. See to it that you donate a percentage of your income your monthly income, whether it be 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, as much as you do, it is better. For charity, and from this amount of charity that you commit from your monthly profit, see to it that you allocate a portion for Palestine. For our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine, maybe for building hospitals, maybe for building schools, maybe for building their homes, maybe for the food, for various causes, we should see to it that we contribute whatever we can. And always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at the amount. He looks at what percentage of donation you have given from the niyama Allah has given you. And I said that before, that if a person who's earning a thousand dollar a month, if he donates hundred dollar, he will get more ajar than a person who earns a billion dollar and he donates only a million dollar. Because one million dollar from a billion dollar is 0.1 percent, where hundred dollar from a thousand dollar is 10 percent. So the person who earns only a thousand dollar and donates hundred dollar will get hundred times more sawab, more blessings, as compared to a person who earns a billion dollar and donates only a million dollar. So Allah will look at the percentage of what you have that you donate not at the amount. So let us make a commitment that we donate 
a percentage of our income for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from this we allocate a share for the Palestinians. Number eight, these first seven points that I mentioned, each and every Muslim can do. Every common Muslim can do this and he should do this. The least we can do for the cause of a Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. The remaining points some can do, a few can do, a handful can do, depending upon whom Allah has given capacity. Point number eight is that all those who have contacts in the mainstream media or influential or own mainstream medias, they should see to it that they condemn the atrocities done by the Israelis on Palestine in the mainstream media. For example, because we have control over Peace TV and Alhamdulillah, as you may be aware, Peace TV has a reach of 150 to 200 million viewers. At this present time, I'm sure tens of millions of people all over the world will be watching this program. They are watching on the Facebook, on the YouTube, and several million more are watching on the social media. So we should see to it that whatever capacity Allah has given you, see to it that this is publicized on the mainstream media. Point number nine, we should see to it that we have specialized organizations which are expert in the law so that we can file legal cases in the international court of law against Israel. Point number 10, there should be diplomatic protests. See to it that the Muslims protest on a diplomatic level to the authorities. And if there are embassies or consulate in the country, see to it they give a letter to the ambassador against the atrocities done by the Israeli government on the Palestinians. Number 11, if the Muslims can get together and we have a trade boycott with Israel, a total trade boycott, see to it that all the Muslims in the world, not only individually do we boycott the goods, all the Muslim countries today, there are 57 Muslim majority countries in the world. We have a trade boycott and should not in any way deal with any goods or in any way whether diplomatic with Israel. Number 12, we should severe diplomatic relationship and Alhamdulillah, majority of the Muslim majority countries in the world, they have already severed diplomatic relationship with Israel. Unfortunately, there are some Muslim countries which are majority Muslim countries yet continue or have started having diplomatic relationship. How can we join hands with the killers of the innocent Palestinians? And killing innocent human being is the second major sin in Islam. After shirk, the second major sin is killing innocent human beings. And especially if it's a Muslim. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the various hadith, that the life of a believer is more sacred than the Kaaba. And imagine hundreds of Palestinian Muslims are being killed. And what are we doing? How can we join hands with the enemies? They are not just Muslims. They are Palestinian Muslims who are doing for the kafaya on behalf of the Muslim Ummah. How can we become friends with the killers of the Muslims in Palestine? We should severe all diplomatic relationships. And I would request all the 57 majority Muslim countries in the world pass such a law that anyone who supports Israel on ground, in reality, or on the social media should be imprisoned. If not 10 years, at least keep 5 years. See to it that they're imprisoned. Make it a law. I know many people are afraid that Israel is supported by superpowers. We fail to realize that we have Allah with us. Allah supports us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with the believers. Unfortunately, unfortunately, as the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that a time will come where Muslims will be in large numbers like froth, but they'll be powerless. They'll be just like froth. The numbers are large. The 13th point, that all the Muslims in the world, we should unite. All the countries in the world, we should unite. And as Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse 103, Allah says, 
وَاتَثِيمُوا بِحَمْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعَ وَلَا تَفْرَقُوا Hold strongly all together to the rope of Allah. That's the glorious Quran and Hadith. And be not divided. We Muslims should be united. The number one uniting factor for the Muslims is the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Today, the scenario that we have, another important point for all the Muslims in the world to unite, irrespective whichever thought you belong to, whichever school you belong to, whichever country you belong to, is the Palestinian cause. Because Masjid Al-Aqsa is important to each and every Muslim in the world, irrespective whether you're living in Saudi Arabia or Malaysia or India or Pakistan or Turkey, anywhere. Masjid Al-Aqsa is very important to every Muslim. If this cause of the Palestinian issue, where they are being mercilessly killed in this war, innocent Palestinians were killed, civilians were targeted, civilian buildings were targeted by jet planes, by bombs. And what is the world doing? Yes, there has been a cry. There has been an objection. But I feel it should be much more. And Alhamdulillah, you find that many countries are supporting, but we'll only be effective if we unite together. If all the Muslim countries, if they unite, and we unitedly stand for our innocent brothers and sisters in Palestine, and we pray for them, inshallah, we will be more effective, irrespective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. He does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. He alone is sufficient. And Allah promises in the Quran that he will surely teach the zalim a lesson. Allah also says in the Quran that he gives them rope to go to and fro. He is just giving them time. Allah doesn't require you and me. But why don't we make hay while the sun is shining? Why don't we support like our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that all the Muslims are like one body. If something happens to one part, all of it, the whole body is in fever. So I request our Muslim brothers and sisters throughout the world that implement on the few suggestions that I've given and see to it that we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He keep our Palestinian Muslims safe. May He give them sabr. May He give them victory. May He give the highest level of Jannah Firdos to the martyrs of Palestine. And We'd like to thank from the bottom of the heart each and every Muslim. I thank on behalf of the Muslim Ummah, the Palestinians, for doing a fard kifaya, for protecting the third holiest site of the Muslims. We thank you and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He reward all the Palestinians, inshallah, with Janet Firdos. Wow, beautiful point from Dr. Zaki Naik. I really enjoyed all his explanations guys i enjoyed it he said we need to protest and some of these points are already in action people have already taken action towards it they already you know is already in action for instance the protest people have started protesting even um the british people people from uk came out in numbers in thousands to you know to rally for the Palestinians and um, this is Dr. Zakinai is speaking for the Muslims. I know majority of the population in Palestinians are Muslims. So he said they should protest. Um, he also said they should, you know, make sure that their voices are heard on social media. He also make sure, uh, made mention of finances that we can assist by uh, financially we can all assist muslims can assist financially you know by donating as a non-muslim i really found all these points very interesting to listen to because that's the most important thing the most important thing when people are going through challenges is finance when you assist them financially at least it will help them to survive when it comes to food water and shelter but at a particular point he raised that I was like, Woo, that was that's serious so like he's he really took this to heart and I could see the you know the zeal he has for the Palestinians. I could see that he he sympathized with majority of those people that 
are going through this crisis, you know, through this problem. So he said, if there's any Muslim that is supporting Israel, the person should be imprisoned. Wow. To me, that was a bit uh, a bit harsh. The truth can be bitter at times, but it was a bit harsh. Just imagine that um, there are few Muslims that are supporting Israel. I believe everybody have their own opinion for supporting, you know, for supporting whatever they believe they are supporting. You get it. But him saying that they should be imprisoned for 10 years or 5 years, man... If they should implement this particular point, you find out that like some percentage of Muslims will fall into that victim. So in my own opinion, I don't think they should be imprisoned. No, we should just talk to them. They will have a change of art, you know. Let them know the reason why they should support Palestinians. You get it. Let them know the reason why. They should show love as a Muslim. Uh, why you should show love more to Palestinians? So I love the you know the points he raised. He also spoke about you know supporting. They need to unite. You know, there's one thing about unity. When you unite together, there's power in unity. When you unite together, you can conquer a lot of things without using any dubious means without using any weapon unity you know breaks boundaries unity brings love it brings peace it brings freedom so the the biggest of all is unity number one point that i believe they should do is to pray they should keep praying to God and God will answer their prayers after that they should support financially then after that they should come as one. They should unite, you know, to rally, to protest, to, you know, to, to, to encourage each other, to help each other in this crisis. This was beautiful. I really enjoyed Zaki Nice point of view. And it was really, really powerful, guys. The only one that, you know, this sits well with me was the imprisonment. In my own opinion, I don't think that should be necessary. I don't think so, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know your points in the you know, comment box. Let's keep this discussion going. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about Zaki Naik's 13 points of action for the uh, Muslims, Palestinians? So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay blessed. Bye.